had this dream the other night about taking a photo shoot. Now, it's nothing obscene or like super crazy or outside of the box. However, every time that I've had a dream and I listen to it, it usually turns out really good. I got my ears pierced because I had a dream about it. The next morning I went out and got them. Same goes for this guy. Got some tattoos that way. I got my car that way. So yeah, the idea was that we're gonna take a photo shoot at a local reservoir that's in town. It's just like this little lake pond thing that's man-made. It's really pretty over there and I think that we can take some really cool pictures in the water with the sand. So we'll see how that goes. I got a model set up for this reservoir shoot. It's actually a neighbor and a really good friend of mine, Emma, and we're gonna go hang out and take some pictures. Now before we jump into any of that though, before we take any sick pictures at the res, let's talk about today's topic, camera settings. See, last time we focused on the why. Why we take pictures, the composition, what emotions you can invoke through images. Today I wanna to talk about the how. How do we take the picture? I mean, obviously you press the button, but what settings do we need to mess around with to make it the way that you want it to look? For this episode, I wanna go back to basics, camera basics, and we're gonna talk about camera settings. If you're looking to take a picture, how you imagine it in your head, whether it's darker, warmer, crisper, then this video is for you. Go hit up the res with Emma. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna go try out some of those camera settings that we've been talking about, trying to you know differentiate between like great depth of field, shallow depth of field, really how to use these camera settings uh, when you're out in the field. So yeah, we're gonna show you guys a couple examples. We're gonna take some pictures, and then we'll talk about it when we get back at the desk. So until then, enjoy the view. Okay, so let's break this down nice and easy into four categories. We're gonna talk about white balance, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Now, those are a couple terms that might blow your head up, so let's just break it down even more before we keep going. Now, you may or may not have heard these terms flown around before, and if you haven't, don't let it blow your head up because they're really simple and easy to understand. And we're gonna go through them one by one together. So each of these tools uh, are camera settings that you can adjust on your camera. Each controls a very specific and important aspect of the image creating process. So I think the first one we're gonna go over that is extremely easy to grasp is white balance. So white balance is a tool on your camera that you can use to adjust the temperature of the picture. So right now I have my camera set to 5700 Kelvin. That way I get nice warm tones for my olive skin and then I set up some blue lights in the background to kind of give that contrast of cold and warm and uh, make myself look a little extra crispy sexy. And it's just for you, because who else would get this, you know, prize, I guess. So the goal typically is that when you are filming, you are changing the white balance to be as neutral as possible. So that way when you're editing the footage, it is very versatile and can be used in many different ways. Uh, however, sometimes I just find it easier to style my edit before I even put it in post. So like I said, currently uh, my temperature without any coloring on the screen is just 5700 Kelvin. And that doesn't make this white. It's still a little orange on the warm side, but that's the style I'm going, going for. I want this like, 
cool background and something that's going to bring contrast, but I still want you to feel like homey and that this is a warm area. You know what I mean? There are reasons to go about changing the temperature and the tint, especially in post, uh, but this just helps you keep everything neutral so that when you're editing, you can change it however you want. So like, why would you want to change temperature aside from, you know, like a vlogging scene like this? Well, I mean, if you're shooting a desert, you probably want that to be warm and hot and look gross and look like sweltering heat. If you're shooting out in the ice or the snow, you want to bring those temperatures down a little bit, make it cool and like brisk, you know? You don't only want to convey the emotion, but like the feeling of it was like to be there to take that picture. I feel like that is also part of the experience of looking at photography is like that subtle feeling of like, what was it like being there and taking that picture? So messing around with temperatures and tones later on, you can definitely stylize your art and make it look a specific way. All right, guys, up next, we're gonna talk about aperture. And this is also pretty simple. So the aperture actually refers to the eye of the lens. So when you see the camera that is like opening and closing with like those weird edges, the lens that opens and closes inside the camera, that is the aperture or the eye. So we'll just refer to it as the eye from now on. The opening of the eye is measured in increments known as f-stops. And the larger the f-stop, the more closed the lens will be. So for example, a shot with f14, the lens will be like practically closed, nearly shut. There's an f-stop of 1.4, which would be extremely open. But what does this mean for our photographs? So the smaller the f-stop, the more light your camera receives because it's more open and the more shallow your depth of field becomes. So as the f-stop increases and gets larger, it gets more and more closed and therefore less light, but more in focus. So this is one of those questions you have to ask yourself. Do I want more light or do I want more focus? And then you would adjust the aperture accordingly. You think to yourself, I need more light in this instance. Like I don't really care about focus. I actually would prefer a shallow depth of field. So I'm going to open it up all the way that it can go and get a shallow depth of field and as much light as I possibly can. So these are things that you need to ask yourself when using this specific setting. So right now we have light and depth of field and we also have temperature. Something else that you can affect greatly with another one of these tools is shutter speed. And this is how quickly the eye is blinking. So when you take a picture, the sensor is opening and closing, and when it closes, that's when it captures the image. If it's closed right now, and then it opens and closes back up to get that picture, if it's fast, it will capture a fast motion. If it takes forever to close and it's sucking up a lot of light and motion so that when it closes, it creates motion blur. The faster the shutter, the crisper the motion. The lower the shutter, the more motion blur that you'll get. But also the higher the shutter speed, the less light because it's going so fast that it's getting less and less. So the longer that you open it up and it's sucking in that light, the more light you'll receive. So you might want to know like how to mess around with these settings. What is each of these used for? If you begin to lower your shutter speed too low, low enough to the point that it's getting that motion blur from your hands shaking, you need to start getting a tripod. You can take pictures of waterfalls at 1 8th and you can get this really beautiful, silky smooth look for the water's movement. So there you go. Weigh those options. Do you need it to be crisp and darker or do you need it to be motion blur and a little bit lighter? So weigh the options and go to the extreme that you need to. And uh, that is shutter speed. The last tool that we're gonna talk about is ISO, and this is known commonly as digital light. This is just an extra push, a little dollop on the end of your picture, just in case you have your settings, your aperture, your white balance, and your shutter speed everywhere you need it to be. But it's still too dark. You've used all your extra lights and you don't know how else to light your scene. So you will bump up the ISO, and by doing that, you will start introducing this fake digital light. ISO is well and good and it can help boost the image lighting. You know, you can get the exposure corrected with ISO, which is why it exists. But like I said, it is fake light. So the more that you introduce, the more noise and grain that is introduced into your image and, and it muddies it out and it just makes it look not professional, not good. This is something we don't want. So a general rule for beginners when using ISO is the less is the best. So I would never go over 6,400 and I 
would try to keep it as low as possible. If you can keep it at a native 100 or like 500, I would go for that as much as humanly possible. Otherwise, you're all in the clear. And now those are all the settings. That's really it. So those are all the camera settings. Like I said, pretty basic and simple. And most, uh, most classes, like if you sign up for a course or like go through high school in a photography course, they usually teach you these things and then kind of like call it a day. Uh, they might keep, teach you some composition like we did last time, and they'll show you like some frame uses that you can do. Uh, but I don't roll that way. Usually they'll just have you go off on your own and kind of experiment until you get your first good picture. For this channel, I just really want to delve into so many things. I want to talk about music and color theory. I want to talk about like sound design and aesthetic, your style, things like that. And the reason being, like, I want this to be an active journey for both of us so that you're learning new things or you're just, like, watching my approach and hopefully that is helping you, like, just think outside the box and let you get a sneak peek as to what's going on in here. If you've ever seen a picture that I've taken and you enjoyed, then there's a reason for you to be here. Or if you just want to learn how to pick up a camera and just point and shoot something, like, just within the first three episodes here, you already know what you're doing. I want someone to watch, like, be able to watch this from the beginning all the way to the end of the show and be, like, a really, really good photographer. Not because, like, I'm a, I'm a crazy good teacher or anything, but because, like, I'm seeking out all this information and just kind of recording my process of uh, trial and error. And maybe this can just help speed up the process for some people to not make the same mistakes I did. But that is it for the episode. So thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end if you guys made it here. Please consider hitting subscribe. It really helps me out. Hit the bell for notifications if you guys like content like this so you guys can get notified when we do more. Don't forget to like the video as well. That also really helps us out and I would really appreciate it. So thank you guys. I have been your test subject as always. I am Oliver and I will see you guys in the next episode of Video Child. Peace out.